I never envy religious people more than I do when the people I love are suffering. And when you reach that point where empathy is painful, you so desperately want something that'll stave it off. I, not the empathy, of course, but the pain at the root of it. And religious people have all their little practice platitudes and woo people have all their pseudo profundities. And what do we have? We have nothing but reality. We can't say anything that doesn't actually mean something. Those are our rules. So we're left to say shit like, if there's anything I can do to help, let me know, even though we know there's nothing we can do to help. Of course, this is kind of what religion is there for in the first place, right? I mean, it evolved for a number of different reasons, but the main reason we seem to tolerate it now in the modern day is that the alternative is coping with loss. and Propping up a tax-free multi-billion dollar institution built on lies and child rape is, for most people at least, the easier option. I mean, the other option is looking the futility and finality right in the eyes and dealing with it, and that option sucks. And, you know, to be fair, I should admit that we atheists do have some of our own platitudes. You know, ours are definitely more clever, but they're platitudes nonetheless. Like, a lot of atheists, myself included have tossed out variations of that Mark Twain quote. You know, Twain said, I do not fear death. I had been dead for billions and billions of years before I was born and had not suffered the slightest inconvenience from it. And that's witty. That's funny. That's why Mark Twain said it. It's witty and it's funny. But if that actually helps you cope with your own mortality, I dare say you haven't given your own mortality a hell of a lot of thought. But, you know, I mean, we use stuff like that anyway because we're not immune from that deep-seated desire to push thoughts of death away and cord them off behind whatever sentence promises to hold them back the longest. So as much as it might seem like it in the moment, this isn't exactly a mark in religion's column. The fact that they can do that and that we can't. like The fact that religion is an effective way to short-circuit our empathy is not a positive no matter how you choose to phrase it. The fact that I envy their ability to do it doesn't mean I'd take it if they offered it to me. I mean, <laughs> they have. They do. Constantly and with great insistence. And I've chosen reality instead, along with all its warts and blemishes. And sometimes that means confronting shit that I'd rather hide from. You know, and, and, I, and I didn't choose this because, you know, I'm tough, damn it, or because I have some abstract fidelity to logic. Yeah, if, if illogical beliefs made it easier to cope with day-to-day -day grief, then being illogical would be the logical thing to do, right? But there's a value in confronting the shit nobody else wants to confront. Like, like, consider how much better we would do as a society at dealing with euthanasia if we weren't all hiding from conversations about death. Yeah, as it stands, our policies about death with dignity are random, cruel, and often governed by religious fantasy. And at least part of that stems from the way we avoid that topic at all costs. Consider how poorly we treat our elderly in this society. We hide them away and we make sure that only a specially trained subset of us ever have to deal with them. We keep the visibly dying out of sight so that we can keep them out of mind. And, and the consequences of that are horrific. I mean, you know, granted, visibly dying people aren't going to get out and about all that much regardless of our societal attitudes, but we barely even talk about them. What's more, look, mortality is ultimately a solvable problem. Immortality doesn't violate any laws of physics or anything, and if you think about it, the fact that solving that problem isn't our number one scientific and social priority is fucking crazy. I mean, yeah, sure, there are scientists all over the world tackling all the constituent problems that would go into curing stuff like aging, but as often as not, they're being thwarted by shit as stupid as moral objections to stem cell research. Hell, even now, many of you immediately started thinking about problems like overpopulation and unequal distribution when I mentioned like, curing aging. And yes, those would be serious issues to deal with, but I'm totally fine with the idea of achieving immortality first and then sorting out all the side effects afterwards, okay? And I mean, this doesn't just matter on a grand societal scale. Our willingness to look this in the eye also matters on the personal level. It also matters that no matter what series of words I offer up to a friend who's grieving, I know I haven't given them shit. It matters that I know I haven't alleviated my obligations of friendship just because I said some magic words about better places and higher callings. 
And it matters that I recognize my job as a friend and a loved one isn't to eradicate the suffering, but rather to remain throughout it and share in it. See, the reason why atheists don't have any good words when their loved ones are suffering is because there aren't any. Right? It's like gods. We all have the same amount, but the atheists are the only ones willing to admit that that number is zero. 